Hey everybody, I'm just recording this intro uh, like this because the intro file got slightly messed up so I don't want to just drop you in the middle of a video and you not really understand what's going on. Basically I'm going to start doing the big clock video soon uh, and doing some Metalworks videos and things like that which may be interesting to people, I think they'll be interesting to a lot of people, not necessarily all of my subscribers. Sorry if it's not for you then just don't watch it. So I'm just sorting a few things out, testing a few recording methods and stuff like that so I'm more prepared when I actually do the proper videos. But also I'm giving you a bit of an update as to what's been going on the Metalworks recently uh, and starting with the three R1 clocks. I wanted to get these done and dusted and out of the way before I started the big clock but unfortunately uh, I had some issues which I'll talk to you about and I'm waiting some carbon fibre so one of those is done, two of them isn't. But anyway, let's go on with the video but you now understand where I'm about to drop you. Okay, so these are the three clocks I've been working on this week, all made from a 2015 Yamaha R1 gearbox. Um, similar to the three clocks that I made before now from an R1 gearbox, but they're all it's all slightly different. Okay, so this one, as you can see, it's like a rotating stand type carriage clock maybe, but it's not a carriage obviously. And this slides off and on. I'm going to take it off, but I regret this every time because it's such a close sort of um, in, um, index between the teeth. You have to get it absolutely perfect, and then it just slots on. <laughs> see, it's too accurately engineered. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, I sort of joined it together with a nice little bridge here, and and whatever. Anyway, that one is that one is done. That one is finished. That we're going on the store soon, and then we'll move on to its slightly bigger brother, sister, whatever. As you can see, I've left the uh, coating that some of these gears have. It's like a thin. I don't know if it's like a nitride coating or something, but it protects it. But it's nice to give a contrast to the dark and then the, uh, the more silver grey. Anyway, well, in contrast with this lovely carbon fibre. Apart from this has got to come out, and this is, this is the mistake that's happened. It was actually this and this. Basically, that was my last piece of carbon fibre. The only place I've managed to get carbon fibre from at the moment is some people donated some offcuts to me, and that's fantastic. If anyone can send me some carbon fibre offcuts through the PO box, I would love you for a forever and a day. Um, because offcuts are useless to most people but very useful to me and carbon fibre is not cheap. Now I've bought a sheet of carbon fibre, I managed to find some that I can get relatively quickly on eBay that's big enough to do these two because well I made this one and I've noticed a very slight scuff. I thought I'd managed to choose a circle out of the circle I had that was slightly bigger so I sort of chose the cleanest part I could because it's as I say they're offcuts they have scratches on them if the if the yes one thing if the carbon's too deeply scratched or if it's really if it's scratched up at all I can't use it. It needs to have that premium finish, which is why I'm trying to find some to buy. I've bought a small amount for now, and I'm going to try and find a cheaper supply. But anyway, uh, I noticed there's a slight scuff on this, which is really hard to see. It's really difficult to show you. I don't know if it will be able to see. Uh, see greasy fingerprints somewhere up here. There's a slight scuff, and I'm just not happy with it. And it's been compounded by this one, this this little thing. You know, you look at it and you think, nah, that's not going to be too difficult, that'll be nice enough. You've got to get a really good finish on it though. If you're making something small and simple, it has to be a really good finish. Um, and I was trying to do it with aluminium and I was brushing it and stuff and trying different techniques on that. And I just wasn't happy with the way that it was looking. So then I was using a buffing wheel on a Dremel, which if you know, with a buffing wheel on a Dremel, it has a little screw that the, the felt goes onto. <sighs> this is painful to show you. Yeah, I was trying different techniques, trying to get it, I was getting closer to what I wanted um, for like an industrial worn look but still nice and I turned the Dremel slightly the wrong way and and never going to come back from that. So as I say, I'm waiting on that carbon fibre to come in so I can finish those and I was like, well I'm not waiting all week for that to come up, they're just going to have to wait. One of those is going to go on the store now and the other two will just have to be finished um, later. As long as I can get that big clock made in this week and into next week, it'll be fine. But I do need to start getting a quantity of clocks out, you know, because I need to bring some money in. So if you're interested in a key channel or anything to help support the channel. But what I need to do today is, well, I need to start doing some mock work on the big clock. I need to cut the base off of it. Uh, and then I've got to go and get some bolts to bolt it together. A bit of cleaning work on it. And then probably the next video will be starting to really fabricate, fabricate it together. I also kind of need to take a car gearbox apart because I need matching parts out of it because I've got some other things that I'm, I want to make uh, which include some parts from this gearbox but I need the matching other things that I have because I had two car gearboxes uh, from a converted mini it's not a mini gearbox it's actually a Corsa gearbox um, but it was put into a built mini so it's a little cooler 
and I need to take that apart and I've taken one of those apart before now and it is a pain in the but then again I don't really know how to take apart a gearbox I was not trained how to do this I just do it in the well if that comes out it's coming out and we'll just pull it apart and if it won't come apart well then we cut it uh, and it worked with the other one so maybe I'll be a bit quicker on this one to understand how it all comes apart but anyway let's let's get on with that we are making the big clock you've seen it before this is the base here this goes on like this none of this is joined up yet uh, and that's going to bolt together but as you can see it we will wobbles because there is a, see a pin that sticks out at the bottom here can you see this i've got another problem with lighting i've got to sort that out I need to do it today actually I'll probably, uh, I'll probably get this done, a few other bits, then I'm going to get all set up. I've got another light here to make things better. As I say, this is very much getting geared up to do the videos in the garage and more stuff like this. And, uh, you know, people might be interested in it. So basically, yes, we've just got to take off this spindle part. Uh, I'd use one mil cutting disc for that and then use a flap disc to just get it down flat again. Five mil thick. Um, this is going to be... Is this hardened or is this mild steel? <laughs> that's pretty soft, actually. Okay, that's good. It should cut through nice and easily. Basically, if that was hardened steel, the file would just go shing over the top and not really cut into it, and it's cut straight down. So, I need my angle grinder. I need a one mil cutting disc. One mil cutting discs are wonderful things. You know, you can uh, you can cut through pretty much anything like butter with them. The problem with them is they have a habit that they pop. In other words, they explode. If they've taken a hard hit or they get a crack in them or they just get old, they can just explode and they can do some pretty nasty damage. So if you're using a one mil cutting disc, never ever bang it on the t on the table. You know, if you've got a flat disc or something or a wire brush, I don't mind as it's slowing down, popping it on the table, it's not going to go flying off or anything will do any great damage. But if you whack this, you drop it, bin it. I always have a look at my clearances and see like how much gap I have between like the spindle and the side because I don't want to catch things. Uh, and just for the easiest, smoothest cut. But unfortunately it looks like I'm actually going to have to make an angular cut in to get it close enough to this edge that I'm not going to be grinding for three days. Um, so, well, just have to see how this goes. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to stand out of the way, but I need to be in the right place to do this. Go for it. Yeah, it's cutting fine, but I'm going to have to keep turning because I don't have the depth sort of to plunge the disc. So I'm going to have to sort of plunge in, in round and round and round. We'll get there. avoided doing it this way because you can't see how close you're getting to the inside of the edge and if you bump it that's when you you know you get a tweak uh, but I'm all the way through mostly I just need to take the very thin walls out so I'm going to have to be very careful right this should come off now but it's not as hot as you might think. There we go, surprisingly flat cut to be fair, considering I went in at an angle, but now I've just got to grind that down so these two edges are flush. Now as you can see I've got about 3mm on these to take down. I'm going to see how quickly a uh, 80 grit flap disc will get this down. It should do it pretty quickly, I'm thinking that'll be okay, but if not I'm going to have to go to one of my much grittier sanding discs. Um, but I just love a flap disc, so I would rather use that. Nope! Do you want to see some sparks? Because you're about to. 36 grit sanding disc. These things eat through metal, I don't believe, so fast that I don't actually use them very often. And I was trying not to set fire to myself because the last time that I used one of these, I didn't realise where the sparks was going. And because it was so concentrated, it actually started burning, you know, burning a hole through my hoodie. Um, Baggy hoodies while you're using grinders is a bad idea, but it's just cold in here, and 
Well, this is an old one, it's from where I used to be a lot fatter, if you can't tell. Anyway, round town. Just like that, it's gone. As I say, I know these videos are different to what I normally make, but I, I believe as bikers we are inherently quite similar people, and these sorts of things, videos, do tend to appeal to quite a lot of people, and people learning and wanting to do more. And anyway, right, right now we have an extremely sharp edge all over it and a bit of a step. So let's just get that down to one level. I'd like to get the camera a bit closer, but unfortunately I'm worried about sparks, bits, hot bits of metal going into glass. What happens is it sticks to the glass and it melts in and it ruins them. I have protective filters on my cameras in here, so it's okay. Um, but I'd just rather not have to go down that road. I will have to work out some overhead thing. This is the thing, early days, remember, early days. But, like the videos. Nearly there. Oh, by the way, if you haven't looked, on my Instagram, I have the Spicy110 Metalworks Instagram and the Spicy110 Photography Instagram, two separate pages, and my main page, which is Spicy110 Official. Links are in the description. If you want to see some pictures I've taken of like making things, not the things, but the process of making them, uh, very difficult to photograph yourself doing those sorts of things, um, but you might find it interesting, so go and check that out. Here's a couple of pictures to give you an example of what I'm talking about. And I've noticed some weird things when photographing welding as well. Go and have a look. Anyway, let's get this done. There you go, completely gone, you'd never know. Still sharp edges, I'm gonna go over this with a wire wheel. I also wanna do that to change the finish of it. While we're talking about it, wire wheels, these things. Oh man, these, these are really good for stuff, but they're horrible, because they fire off pieces of metal everywhere, and I'm not kidding, if you use one of these for more than half an hour, you find bits of it stuck straight, it'll go straight through all your layers of clothing and like stick right into your belly, or I'm even about to be pull them out my hands, because I didn't have the gloves on. Um, I do have some gloves on note, they're welding gloves and I don't want to destroy them doing stuff like this. Generally I'm alright like this and I feel safer because I've got a good grip and I can feel what I'm doing. I know it's dumb and I know on YouTube everyone's going to say, you're going to lose a finger and if I did lose a finger they're going to go, you deserve that. Anyway. So what a wire wheel basically does is, you know, it takes the surface down, it's very even at taking surfaces off, so it cleans it up a lot. Uh, there isn't a lot I can do in these things, so this is have to have proper clean once it gets past the fabrication stage. Uh, but for now that's good, and I've taken all the burrs off, because that's what it also does, it takes the burrs off the edges. So that's how I just, because people have said to me, oh I suppose these clocks of yours are covered in sharp edges that would cut you to ribbons, and I'm like, why? Why would anyone do that? It's so easy to you know, deburr things and clean them up. And the way I find out if they've got burrs in them is because I run my finger through it because I'd rather be the one who's going to get cut by it. And yeah, there is a sharp edge in here still, so I'll just go back over it again. There we go. Not cutting myself, it's all good. Okay, so... <coughs> so in theory now, this should sit in here. Yay! So I need to get some bolts to bolt that part together and I'm going to then have to weld the next bit and clean up the next bits but we'll leave that for the next video or maybe it's the video after next, I don't know because I've got a car gearbox that I'm going to try and take apart and I'm going to do that now. Um, but there's a start going with this and we will move on and this will be done. There's a lot more surface finishing and stuff to do on this. There isn't a huge amount of welding or anything like that but I haven't made it yet and nothing that I make ends up being exactly as I planned from the beginning. It just never happens. Because, you know, mistakes happen, uh, and then you have to incorporate those into the uh, design. They're like unique design characteristics formed by mistakes. So let's end that one there. Apologies if the lighting and the camera angles and stuff is a bit off. I'm going to get better at doing this as time goes on. You know, this is the first time I'm really trying to record myself with multiple angles and stuff, and 
yeah, I've got, I've got to experiment. I've also got to get bolts those lights. But please, if you do like these videos, please help support the channel in all the ways that you can, whether that be, you know, liking the videos, watching the videos, buying a keychain. I've got a few stickers left over, and once they're gone, they're gone. There's hoodies and stuff. I appreciate all the help you have, and it helps me continue making the things I do. And if this, if this works, it may be a steady line of videos alongside my normal videos. I do think my sleep pattern will be somewhat reduced to nothing, because I'll be editing every night working all day. But that is fine, because I'm doing something I love. It's good. Anyway, I'm going to go. Catch you next time. Boy, pull up your goddamn pants.